And my defensive mentality is that I'm marking up against you. And then I want you, by the fourth or fifth point of the game, to look across, to see me on the other side of the field, see me pulling, and saying to yourself, oh, I hope he is not covering me at this point. And then I come running down and you're looking at me and you're going, oh, please don't, just cover somebody else for one point. And I want you to just be so miserable that all you're thinking about is me. And here you are thinking about, oh, this is gonna be so much hard work. I'm gonna have to be like working so hard and he's not gonna give me what I want at any point in time. And I want you to just be miserable. If you're miserable, I'm winning. I'm traveling the globe to play with amazing ultimate teams, explore diverse cities, and compete for championships at the world's best tournaments. This is Ultimate Globetrotter. Ultimate Globetrotter is presented by Boone Technical Clothing. It's Monday morning and it's, uh, it's 9 a.m. I live in Seattle and Vancouver is just north of the border. The Canadian border. It's about a uh, two and a half, really actually more like a three to three and a half hour drive. And it's a drive I take uh, at least once a week to go practice with Furious George, the Canadian Ultimate Frisbee team out of Vancouver. You know what, when you're driving that much, like you kind of come up with your, your routines and your rhythms and like, you know, you have to go a little bit, a little bit crazy to just like survive out here on the open road, on the Fury Road, as I call it. <laughs> so, Furious George is a pretty historic team as far as Ultimate goes. They've won three championships in the early 2000s, two of which were back to back. In fact, Furious George could easily be considered the most successful team in Canadian Ultimate history and for that matter, the world. Founded in 1995 when multiple Vancouver teams combined, Furious George is undefeated at every Canadian Ultimate Championship they've attended, winning their 10th title in 2013. This success is much due to talented players like Andrew Lugston, Mike Grant, and Oscar Pottinger. When you think about what kind of team Furious was, as they were really this Furious team, they were vicious and they'd sometimes go to dark places. Playing Ultimate in the Northwest a lot with, with Voodoo, I really didn't like Furious George. Kind of bending the rules to, to fit the outcomes that they, they wanted. It, it's actually really bizarre to me to be playing with this team. You know, now that we've had a few months of practices, that's all gone away and I definitely feel part of the team. With the Lugstons and Grants having retired, Kevin Underhill is one of those new Furious faces. Though he joined Furious in 2008 as an 18-year-old, he has since become a respected leader and is widely regarded as a pretty sick player. The great thing about Kevin is that he's almost infallible with the disc. Um, don't tell him I said that. I basically see him as an idol. He has the throws that I want, 
He has the timing I want. He's got the hair that I want. He has taken bro casual to a whole new level. This is a guy who is comfortable in almost any social situation and will find the right haircut and beard to complement it. Kevin can be anybody's friend, and that's why he's extremely valuable as a leader. Kevin and teammate Joe Belavance work at Harbor Air Seaplanes, ticketing passengers and working the docks. I work at a um, all seaplane airline downtown Vancouver. Uh, it's called Harbor Air. And uh, I work on the docks, so in the summertime it's quite nice. Um, you know, slinging ropes down there with the guys. It's, it's pretty fun and it's only part time for me, which is uh, a nice balance. Uh, my position is dock hand, so uh, you know we're there to uh, load the aircraft with bags and and uh, the people that are traveling. We help tie to, tie the aircraft down as they come in. We help untie them to send them out. In 2005, my brother uh, Blair, who he's actually played on a, n a number of teams, including Uvic and Furious and Team Canada. He convinced me to give it a try, and, and at first thought I was like, I'm too busy, I play hockey and baseball and soccer, and uh, I couldn't throw a forehand. After a few years, uh, Blair convinced me that I should get some buddies together and start a team at Lord, Lord Bing Secondary, where I started playing. And so we got our team together in 2006, so I was in grade 10, and it was a junior team, so grade eight, and nine, eight through 10. And we started playing, um, Blair taught me how to throw both ways, finally, and um, we actually won the city championships in grade 10 right there, the same year we started the program. I think I first saw Furious George uh, just in like a DVD, an Ulti, Ulti Village DVD. When I was maybe 16 or 17, for my birthday I got like some Gaia cleats uh, and a DVD, a Furious George DVD, and I probably watched it, you know, disc one or disc three, whatever, I forget which one it is, but whichever one it was, I watched a whole bunch. It was pretty cool because those DVDs were really, they were tracking Furious through their golden times. So we're talking that, about a team that was winning world championships, UPA club championships, Canadian championships, all in the same years. I thought maybe if I kept up like after university or later on, you know, several years down the line, if I had kept playing competitively, I would have a shot. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, I kind of thought maybe it was like, you can continue to come out for a bit before you get cut. That's kind of how I read the email. I mean, it said you made the team, but I was still hesitant. I was kind of like, mm, maybe, am I supposed to be on this email list? <laughs> Thanks to Kevin and Joel, we got up in a seaplane to get a good look at the city of Vancouver from the air. Are you ready for this? Then we'll turn northbound up into House Sound. Then we'll start flying up to 1,600 past the Horseshoe Bay Ferry Terminal in Bowen Island. With over 2 million inhabitants in the greater area, Vancouver is Canada's third most populous city. Vancouver's 23 neighborhoods are surrounded by scenes of the North Shore Mountains, the Strait of Georgia waters, and islands like Vancouver Island. Vancouver from the air and it truly is a beautiful city. With our skyline tour of the city complete, we're off to practice, where we'll meet more of the team. Ultimate Globetrotter. Along with Kevin, there is a young wave of talent joining Furious and reshaping the culture and play of the team. This includes players like Tim Sang, Malcolm Bryson, Gagan Chatha, and Darren Wu, 
who has become known for his gold medal performance as a junior worlds player. It goes Wu, Wu for the win, Team Canada, Garrett Wu! I've been playing competitively for around three to four years. I actually have a math teacher that plays on traffic at the moment, uh, Jimmy Cott. She is my math teacher and to get extra credits, I have to go play some Frisbee. So I went out, tried out. First thing I did, sky my coach. And that's how I got on the team and that's how I, that's how I stayed. What I thought about Fierce was they were the icon of, of Ultimate in Vancouver. And searched them on YouTube, looked at the videos, they were just like crushing people and like that's what I wanted to do. And I think that every junior's goal is Furious George. Furious George, the furious part of our name is not really there anymore. It's like we don't have that anger mentality. Within the Ultimate community, I think people saw and maybe still do see Furious as just like really angry all the time, chewing each other out, chewing out the other team. I had three different veterans in a screaming match with each other over how exactly to chew me out. And there were definitely some gnarly practices. You got the feeling that a lot of guys, they really thrived off of this atmosphere of um, anger and I don't know if I'd say hatred, but definitely anger. I never came away from a practice that I wasn't angry about something. But with that anger came a certain strength and a certain resolve. They were all really good, good guys. Like, I never felt like anyone brought their anger from practice into the real world. Um, and I think the group that we have now, that we've sort of molded over the last few years, coming into this year, heading into next year, I don't think it's the same type of people that get going by anger. That was that group and they had their success, they found their success through that. And, and this is a different group and we're going to find our success in a different manner, for sure. When we sort of got elected this year and got together to talk about what success looks like for this season, we talked about CUC, obviously. CUC, goals for that is to win. Every time we have shown up at the Canadian National Championships, we have won. We say a lot of times you don't, you don't want to be on that team that, that breaks the streak, right? Toronto, in particular, poses the greatest threat to our dreams. But I hope that we turn that into motivation. A defensive leader and team captain, Alex Davis has been with Furious since 2009. At 33, he's one of the oldest players on this incarnation of Furious George. He is also widely regarded as a robot. Alex Davis, he is a robot. You know, based off of his injury rate, I would say no, but based off of how he acts, I would say definitely. <laughs> he talks like a robot, he moves like a robot. He might, he might get beat the first few times and then he makes a mathematical adjustment and, and before the end of the game he's got two blocks and sometimes that's all we need. If Davis wasn't around, I don't know if we'd have practice. We might just be a bunch of dudes that want to chuck the disc around and then have some uh, bubble tea or something. Davis keeps things dialed in. My name is Alex Davis. I'm a senior product development engineer at Axine Water Technologies. Um, I analyze the transport phenomena and the electrochemistry um, in an electrochemical reactor designed for the remediation of recalcitrant industrial wastewaters. Day to day, I'm at a computer, my uh, custom setup, which I'm very happy about, and at that computer I'm uh, coding in computer models uh, for the different chemical reactions that can take place in our reactor. I can't take you into the lab itself, but you can peek in through the window. Most of our ground floor space is occupied by the laboratory. Um, you can't go in because it's literally toxic waste in there. I've been described as um, robotic, I understand, because of my somewhat mechanical um, social interactions and my somewhat mechanical movement on the field. I haven't analyzed it extensively on video, but I'm sure it's very efficient, and if that's what they mean, then I'm quite proud of that. I was a very competitive skier, cross-country skier, um, which suits my personality very well. It's an individual sport, it's an endurance sport, and one of the ways I decided to cross-train was to sign up for this Ultimate Frisbee League in Kingston, Ontario. There was something about relying on your teammates and constructing the perfect team machine that appealed to something deeply within me.
last round for people. Oh, come on! Throw me one fucking good one! Morgan, shut up! Morgan Hibbert is a controversial figure in the sport of ultimate. Admired for his athleticism and defensive attacks, Morgan represents the angrier, brutal furious of old. Morgan brings something to the team that uh, that we just don't have. It really is the winning, the winning attitude that Morgan brings. And uh, that's something that he, I'm sure, got through being on Furious, uh, on Team Canada for so many years now. Morgan has risen above injuries that would have ended anyone else's career and has somehow optimized himself in the process and become one of the best players in Canada, if not North America. He's accused me of ever being a whole gamut of things, from being a loser to being lazy. As a teammate, depending on the day, you, you can get really, really uh, calm, supportive Morgan, or you can get really fiery, angry Morgan. When you are the most dedicated athlete on the field, anyone who doesn't meet your standards is incomprehensible to you. In 1999, when I was playing at Canadian Nationals and I was a junior, and I was pretty new to it all still, right? And a friend on the team, who'd been playing for a little bit longer, was like, on our bye, oh, we gotta go watch this, this Team Furious George. They're, they're the best. I was like, okay, sure. So I had no clue who they were. And Jeff Crookshank was, was having this particularly heated battle with this one guy, and they were going back and forth. He, like, catches it over this guy. And the guy, like, he makes this huge bid for it. And Shank doesn't even turn around, and he just turns and he just holds the disc up as he runs around in a circle, just screaming away, just showing it to him. And I'm I love it. I love this team. I love that moxie. I loved everything about it. I was like, this, this suits me. I want to be on this team. So to be brought into that culture, welcomed into it in a very strong, aggressive way, I loved it. I just loved it. It really, really spoke to me, that competitive nature. I spent a lot of time just getting yelled at. but. At the same time, every time I ever got yelled at or ever got talked to, it was easy in that I would just remind myself, here's Andrew Lugston. This guy's won two world titles, two UPA titles, and I haven't won anything. So he probably knows what he's talking about, and I should probably just shut up and listen. So it's kind of like a father figure, you know, someone who you don't agree with a lot of the time, and you get into lots and lots of fights and arguments. Despite all those things, all those guys I look up to and respect more than anybody else and want to be like them more than anyone else. The sort of core of us, like Oscar, Nick and myself, still believe that was what it took to win because the only times we had ever won, that's what it took. It's tough because you want to listen to people and you want to take their input. But sometimes people are just soft and they don't want to be pushed. If you only ever get to your limit, you're never going to be the best in the world. Morgan is also criticized for his part in the infamous World Championship game between Canada and Japan at WUGC 2012 in Sakai. I don't think a single person on either side had an enjoyable experience in that game. And, I mean, that's the worst. You know, I was talking about making it miserable for your opponent, but the winner should have a good time, right? You know, because they won. That game was overly physical uh, to the point where it was dangerous. The emotions took over in an unhealthy way. The frustrating part for us was the lack of communication or willingness to communicate on the Japanese side. Playing International Ultimate with no referees, no observers, Ultimate relies on communicating. You know, both teams agreed, hey, that was a really sucky game. Let's not do that again. And both teams stayed in communication afterwards through through email. We had a really, really good, healthy dialogue. Now, of course, no one ever hears about any of that because, you know, it's not the point. The point isn't, like, to save face in the world and make the world think you're a better person. It's to just make it better. Ultimate Globetrotter. The Canadian Championships is, is uh, it's actually still pretty special to me. Generally speaking, Furious won't go to a Canadian Championships unless it's 
geographically makes sense or a world's qualifying year. Being a world's qualifying year this year, it was a no-brainer. It's not just a party or a reunion, it's also a competition with some very high stakes. It's no secret that the, the big Eastern team and the big Western team in every division is lining up for a, a battle royale at the end. All right, fucking grade two. From grade two to grade 11. I went to AAA basketball tournament, okay? Every fucking game in the finals, after the win, they played Queen Song, who are the champions. And they were fucking crying, they were cutting off the net, and I wanted that. Now, I wasn't very good at basketball, <laughs> so I knew I wasn't gonna get it there. But I knew that every fucking tournament, every big game I went into, and I still do every night listen to that song during tournaments, before big games, because you know what? That reminds me what I want, what yep. fucking takes, and what it feels like to win and be a fucking champion. Fuck yeah! Winning the Canadian national title matters because of pride. Everything before that time has been a developmental step. It hasn't been about winning yet. It's going to be about winning in Winnipeg. Goat's clearly the favorite, but Goat was the favorite in 2011, and we won. When you attend that tournament, all bets are off, and, and Furious George is the favorite at that tournament. Am I worthy to lead Furious? Having that question finally put to the test in some ways scares me. Coming into this tournament, I wanted to make sure to stress to everyone, including myself, that it's not just a no-brainer, we're going to walk into Sunday for sure, and we're going to have to work for every win. And we're out there facing furious wannabes every day now. Everybody's coming out thinking, maybe we can upset the number one seed in our pool. We will continue to ramp up the pressure in the second half. And right now, we're letting their plays affect us. It's tough to control what the other teams do. It's tough to control what the observers do. We showed today that we're definitely fallible. Going forward, I'm expecting stronger play each and every game. On paper, this has been going well for Furious so far. Uh, we're now 5-0. and We've positioned ourselves well going into the quarterfinals. Semi-finals pits Furious against Winnipeg Zone, General Strike. Typically when Furious comes to this tournament, we're not the fan favorites. I, I have a feeling that a lot of people want to see Furious fall. I think we're maybe won 100 games and never lost in this tournament. It's the semi-finals. Furious got up to a big lead. And Winnipeg is definitely upping their game. Stay in this game, stay focused, remember be in the present moment at all times.
Let's go, second half is ours. Let's go, one, two, three. Two, our way into the finals. Obviously we don't think that anymore. Uh, the team we just played had, an, had a really, really phenomenal performance. They came down with absolutely everything. Don't let that get you down, right? That game could have been, that game could have read 15-7 for us if they, if they, if we got like three blocks on those hucks, if those fell to the dirt instead of just barely staying up somehow, right? We played very well. They played very well. And that's going to happen at these sort of tournaments. Mm -hmm. Top level competition, that's what happens. We punched our ticket to the game that we knew we were going to be in, and now we have one day of work before we go home. A lot of rest. We really, really got to take care of our bodies. So there's a lot of distractions here at Canadian Nationals because there's other finals and friends playing today and there's things going on. Uh, but we have an early start tomorrow, and so really, really a, a strong veteran team is preparing for their final right now. And we're not that. We're a young team, and so that's something we got to focus on. And then really start to think of strategy. You know, we've been thinking about our GOAT strategy already. You kind of want to not look too far in the, far in the future. So now we can really focus on talking about matchups, tendencies, you know, reviewing game footage of all the different things that the GOAT players like to do and really drilling it in our matchups that we've got so that we have that experience of having played them five times already when we go to the final tomorrow instead of trying to learn tomorrow. Because if we can come in prepared, We've got a really, really good shot. Goat out of Toronto. They're very strong. They're a very strong team. Uh, four years ago in 2011, when we had a universe point thriller with Goat, um, I'm sure Derek and the rest of the team are thinking of that moment, and that's for sure motivating them coming into finals. Yeah, I don't treat this tournament any different than any other one. Every game is the same for me. It's just go out there and give it my all and play my best. Um, four years ago, Furious, they took one from us we thought we deserved. Um, we thought that uh, we had earned it in the game and then we lost it towards the end. So there's a lot of, uh, right now we're, we're kind of calm and mellow and just trying to get to that point. But I think, I think once that, uh, that first pull goes up, it's, it's gonna be an all out war that I think both teams are really, really looking forward to. Uh, I mean, the, the, probably one of the most impressive statistics is that Furious George has never lost a game at Canadian Nationals. One of the things that we've probably done in the past is we put a, a, a huge emphasis on that. The GOAT we have this year also hasn't lost a game at Canadian Nationals. It would mean a lot to win because we have a lot of guys that have put time into this program. The success of your program means a lot for not just the guys on your team currently, but for the guys who've played for you before. It would be great to win that, not just for you know the 27 guys we have here, but for the countless guys who've played with us before. The, the thing for us is just to make sure that that we, we win and we win emphatically so that they, they know that they no longer can draw on those comebacks. We're trying to build our season around uh, finding success, not necessarily in wins and losses. Um, that being said, a win at Canadian Championships, a gold medal, that's, that's certainly something special and everyone's fighting really hard for it. And so it's in a stadium and everyone's going to be there. And so for years and years, it was the biggest crowd I ever played in. And it's going to be packed and it's going to be loud. Uh, and it's going to be, it's going to be special. There is no source of pressure except for the pressure that we put on ourselves. And if we can just stay focused on our tasks, throwing the disc, taking away the open side unders, listening to the coaches' instructions, everything else should fall into place. I think we're in the best shape we could be to, to go into it. And I think uh, spirits are high, uh, confidence is high, and 
you know, win or lose, we know we're going to give it our all and it's going to be a great game. I'm pretty fired up. I think, I think GOAT thinks they're the favorite. Uh, it's a realistic seeding that they are the favorite. That being said, this is Canadian Championships and we've never lost in this game. Hip shoot, make me feel bad. Here's a love, come fill up with emotion. While I kids understand, when you're alone, you're a river, not an ocean. When the sun needs a sacrifice, she'll be there with a fool to offer up. Gotta make it to a paradise for our own survival. Our own survival. Set fire to the books that you read. We all know where we're at. We all know the jobs that we have to do. Defense, keep the aggression up. When we're on offense, stay calm, collected, take our shots. New teeth, paint me in rags. Give me soul from the rhythm of your beatings. Wild-eyed kids understand. When you're alone, nothing's easy to believe in. When a cause will come to you. It'll come when it's you that's calling up. When it falls, it'll fall. Just witness history. From the beginning of the tournament, from the beginning of the season, I was expecting to win that game. When the final pass gets caught for the, for the win for them, and uh, it's, it was hard, obviously, it's a, it's a total stinger. Games like those, win or lose, it's games like those um, that maybe you want to keep playing. We lost, it sucks, but 
we're, in, we're, we're stronger for it. Some people celebrate emotion in athletics. I'm somebody who celebrates the dedication to your job. It's easy to be disappointed in an outcome, but it's hard to feel bad about playing your best. And that was the consolation that I took away from that. We had opportunities. All you ever ask for in sports and in life is a chance. You know, you just want a chance, and we gave ourselves a chance. Nobody on the field knew that they were supposed to lose that game. No one stopped. It, you know, it wasn't like, oh, here we are, it's the last few points, let's pack it in. It was just, it was a fight all the way to the end. It's too bad, but we can celebrate the good times and start building our own legacy. Dynasties always end, and the ones that last the longest fall harder than the rest. And I think that fight that Fury's put up was the fight that did that Furious legacy proud. I think everyone agrees that this team is about more than this season. And for the first time that I've been on the team, it really feels like people mean it, right? People mean that they're gonna be here for a year, for next year and the year after and the year after, and we're growing a program together. So we have regionals coming up and hopefully nationals. As we go along um, in each game at regionals, if we focus on the things that we've talked about, I've, you know, I'm confident we're gonna be successful. And whether or not that success results in us going to um, nationals, I can't tell you. But uh, kind of like the CUC finals and the CUC tournament overall, right? Worked hard, executed, played our game, controlled the things we could control. Those are things that make us feel successful, regardless of the result of the game. suffering now. All a different bunch of people and like get to meet them, get to know people from around the world. It's pretty fun and being done early is quite nice. So tomorrow is the championship rounds, semis, uh, quarters first, then semifinals. Next time on Ultimate Globetrotter.